Hello, everyone. Michael and Renata Hornstein have been extraordinary donors to the educational, medical, and cultural institutions of Montreal, the city they immigrated to in 1952. Both Polish-born, they spent the war years in hiding, meeting in 1944 in Czechoslovakia, marrying in Rome in 1947, and in that city, kindling their interest in art. Renata Hornstein, née Vittelson, has chronicled her and her family's war years experiences in two books of poetry. Her husband, Michael, quite literally escaped Auschwitz by jumping out of a window when the train stopped on its way to the notorious camp. In Montreal, they raised their two children, Sari and Norbert, and Michael built the highly successful real estate business that he has run for more than 50 years. At 93, he goes to the office five days a week. Their record of gifts, Concordia has been a recipient, and the honors they've received from the queen, the country, the province, and the city would take up more than all my time to describe. But in fact, the reason the Hornsteins were nominated by myself and my department, Concordia's Liberal Arts College, were more specifically their gifts of artworks to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts over the past decade. The sheer quantity, which totals something like 450, according to my calculations, is staggering. It was crowned by last year's announcement of a gift of over 70 old masters. But my nomination was not based on numbers alone. It's based on the fact that so many of these paintings are of exceptional art historical interest and beauty. The Hornsteins, Hornsteins, as well as being generous collectors, have been very smart collectors. As an art historian, I visit a lot of museums. And though our Montreal collection of Dutch Baroque art, an area the Hornsteins have been especially active in, is smaller than those of the Met, the National Gallery in Ottawa, and let's say the Alte Pinakothek in Munich, I personally find it more enjoyable to look at. Most important of all, as a teacher of art history at the Liberal Arts College, I have found their collection of enormous value in teaching. The museum, conveniently located so close to our gray stone building on Mackay Street, has become a second classroom and textbook for my students. The 17th century collection provides all the categories I need to teach the Dutch Golden Age, and at the same time, it presents lots of very interesting, still unsolved mysteries for students to tackle in their research papers. In closing, I invite you, the graduating students, to go to the museum, look carefully, find your own unsolved mysteries, think about them, and as you do, think about the wisdom and generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Hornstein. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Michael and Renata Hornstein so that you may confer upon them the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Thank you. Dear graduates, dear guests, now my honor to ask Dr. Michael Ornstein to make his acceptance address on behalf of Renata 
and himself. Mr. Mr. Ornstein? Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. President and Vice-Chancellor, Honor Platform guests, graduating class, family and friends. It is a great pleasure to be here today. Renata and I wish to extend our heartfelt thanks to the John Molson School of Business and a special thanks you to President and Vice Chancellor Alan Shepard for this unexpected distinction. We are delighted to have been selected as the recipients of the honorary doctorates from Concordia University. The John Molson School of Business alumni list is truly impressive. This university has graduated prominent leaders in business, stock trading, and real estate development, and just, just me. All we know, the John Molson School of Business is a top-ranking business school in Canada whose reputation continues to grow on an international scale. Your education here has helped prepare your success in an increasingly complex and competitive business environment. I'm often asked for my advice on how to be successful in business. There are two rules for succeeding in business. The first one is never tell them everything you know. <laughs> of course, that rule does not apply to professors at the John Molson School of Business. <laughs> what I can tell you is that hard work, dedication, and passion have contributed to the personal and professional success of both Renata and me. Choosing the right job was not a sudden lighting bolt of realization, nor was it something we knew we wanted to do from childhood. Rather, it was a process of trial and error. I have worked in the garment production industry currency exchange, stock trading, importing, and finally, real estate development. Renata has recently written two autobiographical books. The first was A Tumultuous Journey, Horror, Hope, and Happiness, followed by From Precipice to Paradise and Candid Thoughts. These books recount the stories of our lives as they were affected and shaped by our experiences before, during, and after the Second World War. Renata and I both lived through the Holocaust. We met during the war. Let me tell you a little bit about our life stories. Both Renata and I were born in Poland prior to the outbreak of World War II. I attended business school and after graduation, I started out working at a garment factory run by my father. This probably not come as a surprise to you, given my sartorial flair. However, my initial success in the business was interrupted at the beginning of the war, when the factory was confiscated by the Nazis and assigned to commissioners Oskar Schindler Yes, Jet Schindler and Julius Madrid. I warned them until my family was able to escape Poland. In 1943, when my parents were able to board a ship to Palestine, the Gestapo arrested and imprisoned me in Budapest. Shortly thereafter, I was forced into an Auschwitz band, band train which I managed to jump from during a stop on the Slovakian border. After escaping, 
I hid in the forest of Slovakia with six fellow survivors. I was very lucky. Over 70 people jumped, only six survived. Though I was injured from my fall during the escape, my companions helped to restore my health. Once recovered, and while living and hiding in Bratislava, I met, I met my future wife, Renata, among a small group of Jewish refugees which I joined. Here are lessons I learned from this experience. It is a blessing to be lucky. It's good to help, to have help, and it's great to find love. Throughout those difficult years, my business skills helped and sustained me financially. The American magnet John D. Rockefeller once said, try to turn every disaster into opportunity. That was what we tried to do, and I helped us survive and thrive. While living in Budapest in 1944, we heard that the Russians were approaching. There were rumors that the Russians loved fine watches, so I took a gamble and bought hundreds of them in anticipation of their arrival. It was a risk that paid off. I sold all of them. I don't know how many of you have shared similar experiences, but those who have known that hardship, if it doesn't kill you, can make you stronger, more tenacious, and more resilient. So here is one more important life lesson. If Russians are coming, buy watches. <laughs> In the year following the war, In the year following the war, Renata and I moved to Rome, along with her six uncles and aunts. I was trading currency then and continued to do so. I also began trading stocks. Another important lesson for me and all of you, I learned that October is one of the particularly dangerous months to speculate in stocks. The others are July, January, September, April, November, <laughs> March, June, December, August, and February. <laughs> Though we love Italian culture, architecture, and music, we decided to emigrate to Canada on the encouragement of Italy's Canadian ambassador. So in 1951, Renata and I moved to Montreal. After our arrival, I was I first worked in as an importer. Later, I partnered with, with a builder, Fred Louis, and my late brother, Abraham, to form our own real estate development company. This venture would prove to my ultimate business endeavor. At 93, I still go to the office five days a week because I truly love working and always have. My advice to you would be the same. Build your business around your passion, regardless of the challenges you may face or how long it might take. They say Rome wasn't built in a day, but that's because I was not that particular job. <laughs> I have been immersed in the real estate business for over 50 years and have earned pretty decent living for myself and my family. But money, it turns out, is similar to sex. It's all you can think about it when you don't have it, and once you do, you seem to think about other things. <laughs> Here is another life lesson. It's important to focus on things other than money. The aim of life is not to be rich, but to live a rich life. Money is a means, not an end. Renata and I make time to do things we enjoy, like traveling and collecting art. We have developed a keen interest in art and have built a very nice old master collection 
due in large part for her discriminating taste. My inability to bargain hard over prices also helped. In Rome, Renata would visit museums and galleries regularly and invite me to join her. It is thanks to Renata that we both developed a passion for art, a passion which she initiated, encouraged, and sustained. In addition to making sure to enjoy our own lives, Renata and I also recognized the importance of giving to others. Canada and Montreal have been very good to us. We think it's fitting that we share our good fortune to show our appreciation in concrete ways. The support of arts, academic, and medical institution has always been a priority for us. We have worked with the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts for 40 years. As a symbol of our devotion to the city we call home, Renata and I recently decided to donate our total collection of old master's paintings to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. We discussed the matter with the president, Brian Levitt, director, Natalie Bondel, and head of administration, Paul Lavallee, who were extremely enthusiastic about this offer. Renata and I then met with Raymond Bashan, the former Quebec Minister of Finance and Revenue. We negotiated a deal whereby the Quebec government will give us 18 and a half million toward the construction of a new museum pavilion to house our collection. The new Mike The new Michael and Renata Horstein Pavilion for Peace will be inaugurated in 2017, a gift to Montrealists, including all of you here today. In Montreal, we have given our support to several prominent academic institutions, including Concordia. We have also supported improving healthcare resources and medical technology in our city. So another life lesson. It's important to share your success with others. Humanitarian, financial, and cultural contribution have far-reaching benefits for generations. It may even snag you as a honorary degree, though this was not you, you should, why you should do it. You. I will conclude with the following. Advice to you, be passionate about your work. Be tenacious, appreciate and share the rewards, and if you want to be adored by your peers and have a standing of an ovation whenever you go, live to be over 90. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, we should all live, we should all live, you should all live to be over 90. Uh, and there might be a few up there, who knows? Welcome if you're on there. Uh, Dr. Ornstein, Michael, Renata, you really do us honor by accepting this way um, to join our family here at Concordia. And I know that uh, my colleagues, graduates, are all very proud to now know that you're part of their family. Um, I took notes of some of your success ingredients. I don't know about the watches. I'm not sure about the sex. I'll let you, work, you guys figure that out. But I do uh, thought it was cute to hear him say, you can, don't tell him everything you know. En français, on appelle ça, garder une Jane. You know, you can't say it all. Try to keep your secrets to yourself. 
But hard work, dedication, and passion obviously are ingredients. And when you hear the Hornstein's life journey, you, it's like seeing a movie, isn't it? Eh? It's a, you can imagine Poland. You can imagine uh, him jumping off the train. Less than 10% of the folks making it um, in 1943 in uh, the train bound for Auschwitz. You can imagine the tenderness that existed when Michael met Renata in Bratislava. All this kind of tells us that uh, these are inspirational people. They've, they've fought hard, they've had uh, their travails, and it's made them stronger. And in that regard, that for us is a lesson that really what doesn't kill you makes you strong. We've all heard that. But to hear life examples of that is quite moving. To see how they've been able to translate their success and their wisdom, their knowledge, their fortitude, their courage into the philanthropist that they became is as well a true inspiration for all of us. So on your behalf, on behalf of your kids and those that are unborn, what these folks have done to uh, give what they have to our museum is a gift to all of you and generations to come. So on your behalf, thank you very much.